Okay, this is Gamer Blave, and we are back with another episode of Ghost of Tsushima, Director's Cut. If you missed the last episode, or you just want to be reminded of what happened in that one, guys, that was a big one. We we took out the eagle. We finished off the eagle on Iki Island, and honestly, guys, I think that that was the main thing we wanted to do here. As I've been saying, I'm not really a completionist, but... I kind of fell into uh, a, a little a black hole in between the last episode and this one. And as a result, this episode is going to end up being a little bit different than the usual episode. So I'm just going to kind of describe what's going to happen. But first, I kind of want to go ahead and lay out like you, know, you might be looking at us and say, hey, you know, we look a little bit different. So we are wearing that armor that we found in the last one. Um, you can see that Sarugami, Sarugami armor. I wanted to try it out, but in order to try it out, I wanted to make, you know fully upgrade it and give it its fair shake. So we've got, um, you know, regular parry is disabled, which is, you know, really weird. It completely changes the way that you, you do combat. But perfect beca uh, parry becomes a chain of three attacks, and perfect dodge becomes an attack that blinds enemies. So, I mean, it just, it really changes the dynamics of combat. And it's, it's interesting. I don't know if we're going to, if we're going to keep this thing, but one, it, it looks amazing. It just looks absolutely amazing. I think it's just the, uh, maybe the most visually stunning armor that we've come in contact with yet. And then I've been wearing that headband because I just think it totally goes with it. Uh, we get all resolve gains are increased by a massive amount and perfect parry and perfect dodge windows are increased by a major amount. Uh, and now I think I'm actually going to change up our, uh, our charms here. Uh, but I, I won't do that right now. Uh, so anyway, uh, we're getting the, uh, perfect parries, uh, parries, perfect parries and perfect dodges are easier to perform. That one just seems like it's made for this armor. And then this one is a very interesting one, uh, that it, it, it came from the, uh, those monkey shrines. If you remember those monkey shrines, uh, but anyway, whenever you use uh, your healing, your perfect parry and perfect dodge windows are extended for a limited time. Uh, but healing costs one additional resolve, so it also that that also kind of changes. I mean, it, it enhances this armor, but it comes at that cost because healing becomes you know obviously twice as expensive. So. Uh, so anyway, that's kind of the the major change to our setup we've got going here. And then also, if you whoops, I didn't I didn't actually mean to set off our healing there. But so as you can see, it kind of darkens our screen here to show that that's the, our effect going on. And uh, sadly, that's twelve seconds that we've got to burn here. But look look at this. Uh, we got a uh, so a horse armor um, that kind of like matches our armor. So Nobu kind of, kind of like he, he goes with us now. So <laughs> we're like, we're rocking this green theme and I think it's pretty cool. So anyway, uh, I kind of want to talk about just really quick what this episode is going to be like. So, uh, we're going to take a look at the map here. And as you can see, I ended up, I was like, Hey, you know, I've got a couple of these question marks that I'm going to just go around and do. And as I started doing the question marks, like more question marks popped up and I was like, okay, I'm going to do those. And I had, I, I had the recorder turned on, but I didn't, I didn't have my microphone turned on. So I wasn't recording any commentary at the time as I was like, Oh, you know, these are mostly going to be not very interesting things. It's just going to be like a, uh, you know, shrines and things like that. But actually some of it was kind of interesting. There are a lot of memories and things like that. And a couple of the, a couple of the other activities, um, were kind of interesting. So I was like, you know what, I've got two and a half hours of footage is what I wound up with. It took me two and a half hours of footage to, I, I don't know if I would say do everything that Iki Island has to, to offer, but basically, uh, um, you know, we got an achievement that said, you know, you've defeated the Mongols and run them from Iki Island. Uh, you've done all of the bamboo strikes, uh, and, um, and hot springs. Uh, you did all of the uh, animal sanctuaries. Uh, so, you know, we got a couple of different, um, trophies. Um, but anyway, so I wound up with this footage and I, I ended up cutting it up. And I would, 
you know, if you're not interested in this, um, then that's fine. You can go on. I would highly recommend that you watch the first uh, 15 minutes of the footage or so, because in uh, what I did was I put the I put the actual memories where he goes, you know, reflections of the past. I put those first and there's about 15 minutes of those. And then after that, um, there's just a bunch of other things where we where we go and do other stuff. I didn't include stuff like the archery challenges. I I just left those out entirely. Um, you know, most of the stuff where we just encounter patrols and things like that, that's out. Climbing shrines, we didn't have any of that stuff in here. Um, so yeah, all that stuff is gone. Uh, and, and it's really just, uh, the meat and potatoes. Uh, and then, you know, there's, there's, um, you know, the, the big parts of, a, of, uh, like one or two of the tales in here. So, you know, we wind up with more or less one full episode of content. And I, I think if I'm not mistaken, that means we had about nine episodes of content uh, from Iki Island. So I think that that was a pretty good, a pretty good DLC. But anyway, guys, let's go on um, with the um, uh, with our uh, with our um, I guess our montage. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually. Um, I'm going to actually record my commentary after the fact uh, over over our over our scene. So we'll see how it goes, guys. And uh, I know that this is a different format than usual, but here we go. Hmm. My father's forces made their initial camp here on the island. My lord, your father is ready to address the men. I really like that the Iki Island content gives us more Let's gather your honor. more insight into uh, Jin's past, and especially his relationship Come. with his father. Your father wants you to join the men. They consider themselves the masters. Of Iki, lords of the sea. But I don't smell lords. Do you know what I smell? Rats. <laughs> Greedy, vicious, disease ridden rats. Man. And we have found their nest. Come here. Apologies, Father. Every warrior under your command owes you five heads. As for what you owe me, 50 heads each. Anything less, and you can swim home. Another thing that I find really interesting about this Ready is that it, it kind of shows we that. For Mount Father, let me have a look in the light. That Jin had. That before he met Lord Shimura, or not met, but before he was under Lord Shimura's, um, I don't know, guidance, hmm. he had some combat experience. Or he'd seen combat. Shoulders loose. One good strike, that's all it takes. I'm sorry. A warrior learns from his mistakes, or he's buried by them. But you won't die today. Remember your training. Never leave my side. You wish I hadn't come. You're here now. Pay attention. Sharpen your skills. Make your father proud. Just because the the scenes with Lord Shimura really seemed like he was so very green and fresh and just hadn't experienced anything like that. Like he was so naive, but these scenes did I make you proud, Father? Yeah, these scenes really make him seem uh, a little bit, I don't know, like 
yeah, it's just it's just very interesting. I drank my first sucker here. I re I really wonder if they had had realized or thought of the, the that they were going to have this done uh, with his father. Um, when they made the first part of the game. We're out of sake. Go get some from the men. Yes, father. I I have to imagine that they did though, because they had his father's death, and they had it, you know, with the line, you know, may the, may your death benefit all beings, and they had that scene there exactly like that. I mean, unless they just you know just happened to you know make it fit. Um, I don't know. It was just like Tickle's head. The rats hardly knew what hit them. Young Lord. You all seem in good spirits. Congratulations on today's victory. <laughs> the credit belongs to your father. The raiders call your father the Butcher. A fitting title for a legend. I strive to honor his example. Now, if you'll excuse me, my father requests more sake. Ah. Take this. The raiders don't need it anymore. They're dead. <laughs> yeah, screw those guys. <laughs> Man. Yeah, I mean, I, I wonder how old he's supposed to be in this scene. You know, or or at this time, you know, when he's when he's fighting. It's just so strange to me to think of bringing... I'll stay close, my lord. You know, Thank you. a child. I mean, like, I, I can't imagine he's more than, what, 13 or 14. I brought the sake, father. Good. Sit. Drink to victory. Shouldn't we be celebrating with the men? The lord must set boundaries between himself and his followers. Why? Familiarity breeds a lack of discipline. But... They lay down their lives for you. And it is their duty to do so. Without question. As it is mine to obey my Jito. Your mother and I discuss such matters often. I relied greatly on her counsel. I wish I remembered her better. Choco had clever insight. Deep compassion. Losing her was like... Losing the best part of me. This flute was hers. It's all I have of her. Let's hear it then. Please, play it. I really like that Jin's father isn't portrayed as like... That night was the first time you asked to hear me play. The first time I... felt like your son. He, he's not like either like the perfect father, obviously. You know, the, but he's also... He's also not like this brutal villain. This canyon. My father died not far from here. Uh, which, in my opinion, is rare. Like, usually, you know, usually you're going to have one or the other. You know, you're going to have a stereotype. Like, he had a really horrible father, and that explains, you know, his dark... You cheated. His dark side. I don't know how, but I'm certain you did. You owe me 20 mon. <laughs> Come, let's get back to camp. I was taught that debts owed to swindlers are not to be honored. Hmm. I was taught there's no shame admitting defeat by a superior opponent. <laughs> Next time we compete, I would like to inspect your arrows. You bring them on. I'll bring the arrows. One last battle. One final fight. Then I think that might be Lord Adachi there. Leave this stinking island. Pardon me. I must speak with my father. Of course. Lord Shimura's stewards can collect taxes and tend the manure fields. Father, a word. 
Yes. Walk with me. What is it? After this campaign, don't you want to stay? Bring Iki Island under your control. It's not for me. Only in the battlefield are my homes. And you? Would you stay and rule this place? I thought I would. But after everything we've been through, I feel more alive in battle than any other time. <laughs> uh, you are Sakai. What do you mean? Let the Shimuras of this world keep records and manage councils. We are the lightning in the storm. The avalanche that topples a mountain. That is Clan Sakai. I understand, Father. I once judged you soft, unfit. Now, time together has given me... Lord Sakai! Pardon my intrusion. Our scouts bring urgent news. Yes. One moment. I must go. Prepare your things. Follow my lead today. Everything will be fine. Yeah. I'm not necessarily with Lord Sakai there in terms of, you know, being the lightning in the storm, but I wouldn't want to what rule you either. What to say, Father? What did our time together give you? I've often guessed. But we'll never know. I think that would be a horrible burden. Hmm. Then and now. I held a vigil here once. After my father died. song. It's very beautiful, my lord. It's not finished yet. It's in memory of my father. Ah, uh, I apologize for disturbing you. I've packed your belongings, but some of your father's effects are missing. I'll look for them in just a moment. Of course, my lord. I am kind of wondering what happened to Clan... We'll finish this back at home, father. What happened to Clan Sakai? Um, if it just kind of, like, became part of Shimura, like if he just kind of absorbed it, or if it basically was obliterated when the Mongols attacked, uh, because we don't really see any of it after, you know, after the game, after Ghost of Tsushima starts, we don't really see any of it, but it, you know, it seems like, you know, he's got, uh, you know, like, we're oh, more or less in command of an army here. Calligraphy. I'm sure reading this, he could hear her voice. I wish I could remember the sound. Or at least in command of some troops. We are the lightning in the storm. The avalanche that topples a mountain. That is Clan Sakai. Some of my father's last words to me. Lord Shimura told me how father broke this blade in a duel. Shocked by his strength, the Chikzen rebels surrendered immediately. Young Lord. It's time to leave. Lord Adachi, forgive me. I'm still collecting my father's belongings. Our scouts report raiders in the area. We must go. Please. Come with me. Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah, I thought that this was weird, like some of the movement. I am sorry for your loss. Um, know that we all grieve with you. <laughs> And the path my or the, you, the, the route that he takes the here. The people of Omi village are preparing your father's funeral. My men and I will escort you and your father home. Yeah, man, I, I wish we got to see more um, Adachi. Like, we just get him at the very beginning saved him. of the game. His assassins would have killed you as well. Clan Sakai must prevail. Soon, you will wear your father's armor. I will never be worthy of it. My lords, our scouts report a large group of raiders approaching. I fear we must depart immediately. But the boats aren't fully packed yet. Our supplies... Leave them. Our people's lives take precedence. You heard Lord Sakai. Go! 
I think Ad I think Lord Adachi would have been awesome to see more of. I mean, like Shimura sent him down to the Mongols by himself and was I like, ran break from them. These memories most of my life, but now, after facing them, I think I understand you, Father. After the battles, and under the legend of Kazuma Sosakai, you were just a man, chasing something. Or maybe running from yourself. I'm glad you slowed down and finally saw me. But I'm sorry it was too late. I hope someday I can make peace with your death. Let us finish your song. Guys, I think that that's my favorite thing about um, about the Iki Island content is that we go from not really having any idea about what his relationship or history or past was with his father to actually met getting like some before, idea life, of what it was like. Friends. But the best I can do is put the past behind me. And maybe that's enough. Spring begets new life. A summit looms too distant. The past weighs on us. Okay, so if you didn't notice, now we're kind of uh, done with the memories, and I'm kind of just showing you the highlights, some of the highlights of uh, some of the things we did. So we got the extra resolve there. I was really happy about that. Really, really happy about that. Because <laughs> at this point, it takes quite a few bamboo strikes the the monkeys dance. Uh, to get Reminds that. Reminds me of a song my mother taught me. Let's see if I remember it. Now, these are kind of cool. Uh, not only, I actually kind of like the flute mechanic, guys. I'll be honest. I like the, I like these tunes but I think more importantly you get a little bit of you get a little bit of history at least anecdotal um, of of um, how his relationship with his mother through these tunes so you get some of his father through those memories but when you go and interact with these animals he, he tells you you get to hear these like little stories um, of his mother. That was the first song she tried to teach me. I pouted when I couldn't learn it. So she played with me. As terrible as I did. So I wouldn't feel bad. And this is that charm that we, uh, we ended up using. So I, I think that it's, I think that it's going to be a really good charm to use with that specific armor. Leaves whisper nearby. White buds shimmering, exposed. Sunsets lead to dawn. You're going to be all right. Forget about me. Please, go to the north of the island and look for the cliff with the seagulls. Why would you send me there? I have seen men leap to their death. They say the eagle tribe makes you choose, join or jump. And now they have my son. Say no more. I'll make sure no one has to make that choice again. Yeah, so I thought that that was kind of an interesting... 
uh, set up for uh, one of these outposts, you know, with all with them like throwing all these people off of this cliff. So, so that's one of the reasons why I I uh, decided to include this one in it. Although that being said, you know, other than you know having that little area over there, it doesn't really it doesn't really you know have anything particularly special going on here. That said, it does have, if you notice that, that bonus objective, kill people undetected without using focused hearing. So uh, that one kind of threw me off. I'd never seen that, uh, that bonus objective before. So I was like, oh, took me a minute to process that one. And for some reason, this chain assassinate just did not did not uh, work because I guess that guy turned around and saw uh, saw me before I slaughtered him so that one didn't that didn't count I remember being irritated about that not gonna lie just kind of scoping it out and that was a rough landing But it just occurs to me to uh, use the old uh, the old wind chimes because I'm I'm thinking that those guys might be able to see him if I kill him, kind of where he is. Here you. I can deal with him one by one. But um, yeah, I, I I don't use the wind chimes very often at all, mostly because unless they give me an objective that says you have to be stealthy. I really don't care to be stealthy. Just not, not too concerned with it. Okay, so I did a good bit of deliberation before I finally decided just to come back over to this area and, and chime this guy. And since I was trying to make this episode as condensed as possible i i really you know needed to cut that out because i just didn't need a couple minutes of me just trying to trying to figure out how to fulfill this bonus objective yeah that was a great shot but anyway now all i need to do is slaughter everyone and that's typically not a problem Especially since I've got that ghost dance triggered up. Nice. The, the ghost dance will make the shaman stop chanting so you can uh, get in there and do what needs doing okay so I cut this camp again because it took me forever uh, to find these dudes And usually it says, you know, like you can issue a challenge to the last guys, but uh, I don't know, for some reason it, it didn't. And uh, the only reason I'm including this fight is because I want you guys to be able to see the good and the bad. And, and this one, this was just a particularly, it shouldn't have been a bad fight. I don't know why. I was just, I really struggled. I really struggled with those guys. With, I don't even know what that weapon is. Just like a, uh, I don't know, double bladed something or another. Kind of reminds me of Darth Maul's lightsaber. You know, if, if it wasn't a lightsaber. But anyway, I mean, those guys are just, they're so brutal. I mean, I, yeah, whenever I encounter those guys, I just need to use ghost weapons on them. There's no point in, like, they're just, they're just so relentless. 
And, and it's so, it's so brutal. I mean, like, there's no point. There's just no reason to fight them, like, head on. I don't know why I even bother trying. Like, do that. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that I think that the last couple of guys are up here. But yeah, the camp was much bigger than I originally thought it was. Like, like sometimes these camps like appear to be small, and then <laughs> there's just dudes everywhere. Yeah, see now that's that that's that that power. So we only used two of the attacks from our uh from our parry there, but we would have gotten another one on him. Um so like even if he was even if he had more health than that, we would have been able to I mean we would have been able to kill even a very, very strong enemy if we perfect if we did a perfect parry. But it, it's also, it's also, ex yeah, it's also extremely effective at clearing a group. Um, as, uh, I mean, we'll see eventually. Uh, I don't know if uh, there's any, if I have it in, in this episode or not. But um, we'll get it at some point. Because when you parry one guy, if you kill him and there's another guy around, you'll get to use that attack on someone else. So you could potentially kill three guys with one parry. It's really, it's really something else. And that's the achievement that says, basically, you shall I play for this? got rid of all the Mongols. Calm down. My mother taught me the song doesn't need to be simple to be calming. On the one hand, I think it's a little strange that, um, you know, he can charm animals. On the other hand, I, I, I don't know. I like having these, like, different sides to Jin. Like, I mean, on one hand, he's this, like, extremely um, brutal warrior. But on the other... she was sick, my mother would sit alone watching the deer. I climbed on her, trying to get her attention, till my father scolded me for disturbing her. She smiled, holding up my chin, and said, Peace doesn't always come quietly. I don't think either of us understood what she meant. Well, that's a good example right there. On the other hand, as I was going to say, he's very contemplative. Like he, the same tune he, appreciates, he appreciates that's poetry. wild. And like these cats and music, um, and and nature, animals, and things like that. So it's it's just very. Um, he's just a really really interesting character to to play, and it doesn't hurt that the gameplay is like the gameplay loop in Ghost of Tsushima, at least in my opinion, is extremely fun and rewarding. <laughs> that was. That was crazy. That was a crazy one. I did not keep it in there very well. But the cat seemed to appreciate it anyway. Hmm. I broke the song and made something new. Like when my mother taught me how to take tea, every step, then drop the teacups on the floor. And then we took tea again, without cups. She said it's not enough to know the rules. It's only when you break them that you understand why they matter. I wonder how you take tea without cups, just drink it from the pot? My mother would have loved this place. The deer. I'll play one last song. For her.
At the end, my father carried my mother out to sit with the deer like this. And I played this song. It was messy and broke the rules. But it was one I wrote. She opened her eyes and smiled at me. I wanted to tell her everything I would ever say to her. But she knew. She said, not all words need to be spoken. Hmm. My father's samurai bathed in one of these springs after our first day on Iki. He let us wash away the stink of battle while he cleaned his wounds with cold river water. Wow. Monkeys love to play. It's My mother like... said you've never mastered a tune unless you could play with it. Make it yours. Let's see how I do. It seems like his dad was like self-flagellating there or something. Or maybe just making his... Or wanting his, uh, his men to think he was super awesome. I don't know. <laughs> now, apart from the story ones, at this point, the monkey... Uh, the monkey songs were the ones I was most interested in because they were powering up. The first time up. I improvised, she laughed. But the last time, she closed her eyes as she listened. The sunlight on her cheeks, her face serene. Even after seeing her sick, that's the face I'll never forget. Uh, they were powering up that uh, charm. Time. Who did this? Mongols? No. A rival band. Traitors. Uh, Yamaneko and his crew made a deal with the Mongols. Mongols armed them with Wacha. Who are these raiders? Where can I find them? Uh, ask Sugi. She, she can help. The village to the south, Red Casa had won her. Uh, they're coming. Uh, uh. Troubled waters. I hear the watchers. Run! So this is the last quest, uh, or the last tale that we end up uh, starting yeah, my crew. Uh, or spiders. doing on uh, Iki Island. And it's, uh, I think it's a pretty neat, neat uh, tale. I find it to be interesting that they're like... I mean, apparently... They're using Watcha to get me, but I mean, these guys are also being targeted by it. So I, I found that to be kind of strange. I was like, look, that guy's getting cooked. Like they want to, they want to kill any survivors so badly, though they're willing to target their own men. He said to look for Sugi in the village to the south. If the Mongols recruit more raiders, must be the village. Hmm. I should ask around. Someone must know this Sugi with the red kasa hat. Are you all right? Leave us alone. Any more like you? Excuse me. I'm looking for a woman. Her name is Sugi. No way. We have our own troubles. Oh, you could ask for help? 
At this point, Jin should have a pretty decent reputation on the island. A lot of smoke. Signs of an attack. Looks recent. Looks like watch a fire. Maybe from the same boat that attacked me on the beach. And the Hwacha are ridiculously devastating in this Someone game. Someone is living here. Still warm. Yeah, it's in a smoldering house. What? I think pretty much everything's warm. You're looking for me? Why? I mean you no harm, Sugi. My name is Jin. I was sent to warn you. The vessel that fired on your village belongs to someone named Yamaneko. I need your help to stop them. They know I'm here. That means... Should we leave? Draw them away? No! No! We don't know anything! It's too late. Pack our things. Be ready to go when I return. Come with me, Jin. Hmm. Come back to me. I'll avoid unnecessary risk. There's a first time for everything, I suppose. Sugi! Yamaneko sends his regards. Sebe, you always were his lapdog. <laughs> How do you like our new allies? Soon we'll be the most powerful crew on this island. Kill them all! Yeah, it, it kind of seems weird that, um, that the eagle. I mean, I wonder if this only appears after that the eagle uh, is dead. Um, of course, I don't know if it was there or not. I can't remember if it was here before. Um, but it, it just, it, it seems strange that uh, she would... Oh yeah, there you go. See, we got, uh, we got three attacks there. And we got to use two of them on those guys that I really hate. Um, and it was really nice because we got to finish him off there. Um, Not bad. Come with me. Um, but I mean, certainly, if she was. Yamaneko's crew are careful, well armed, only dock at a specific time and location. Certainly, if she was met. allying, um, she wouldn't. I mean, she would be doing it for her own ends. So, I don't I know. I was his first mate. Kept him from indulging his worst tendencies for a time. When I met Sampe, I didn't want to be that person anymore. But you don't just leave Yamaneko. Tell me where his ship docks. I'll handle them. We work together, or not at all. Hmm. <laughs> just remember that goes both ways. You're good with a blade. I have an idea we might be able to pull off, but I need to scout around first. Track down an old contact. There's an abandoned fishing village to the west. I'll meet you there. Good luck. Hmm. You too. This is the place Sugi mentioned. Where is she? of Yamaneko's crew. I'll deal with them. Oh, man. Guys, I'm telling you. I don't know how many times we have done a standoff, but I'm not tired of it. I'm not tired of it. Or at least I'm not tired of winning them. Ruin that guy. Perfect parries are certainly more satisfying than regular parries. Someone help! Now you can still block. Like they didn't disable block, but just parries can't do that. <laughs> Thank you, my lord. 
That was quite a sight. You're not a samurai or ronin. What exactly are you? Someone like you. Who knows what it's like to be hunted. I scouted the cove. Yamaneko's crew are trading captives for Mongol watchers. Treasonous slavers. We can't let them have more Mongol weapons. Yes. We'll need to split up. Okay, that makes a little bit more sense. So they were actually hooking Strike them up the with slaves. Beach. I'll take a boat out. I've been slipping aboard ships undetected since I was a child. If Yamaneko is as dangerous as you say... He's my responsibility. Yamaneko is... my brother. You're sure you're up to this? Yes. All right. I'll head up the coast to where the Mongols and raiders are camped. Find some way to deal with them all. I can take over their watchers. And even the odds for you. Good. If we make it look like the raiders have betrayed the Mongols, they should turn on each other. I'll send you a signal of where to aim. Hmm. A little flower into their campfire will make it flare. Good luck, Sugi. Hmm. You too. Okay. Now, when I was playing this, um, for some reason, I, I only thought that I was supposed to do that for the first fire, and There's that was just gonna. Post nearby. I can't leave until. I'll take care of them first. And Meet that me was on the northern coast afterward. And that was just going to have her, have her like signal like when to attack. I didn't re. I I missed the part where it was like, this is gonna tell you where to aim. So I got a little bit confused, I gotta be honest, about like exactly what I was supposed to be doing here. Um, and it kind of led to a little bit of mayhem ensuing. I mean, it ended up working out more or less okay, but, uh, but um, it's not exactly the smoothest operation that's ever, <laughs> that's ever happened. Man, that's really satisfying too. Once night falls, Suki can row out to the ship. It's not exactly fair, but it is satisfying. <laughs> Better look around. I'll use that campfire to signal Sugi. Direct her watch attack. Yamaneko's crew and the Mongols working together. Those pieces of crap. Ends here. Time to signal Sugi. Yeah. So, <laughs> so at this point, I was like, uh, you know, he, I, I was not a hundred percent clear on what I was supposed to be doing. Which, you know, if you actually paid attention to uh, the dialogue, it would be perfectly clear. But uh, what's that? But, um, fortunately, fortunately, it kind of, it, it helps you out with these little, with these little waypoints and stuff. But I should have, I should have done a little bit more recon. Um, should have done a little bit more recon because, um, because the last fire is is um he's up there and I didn't really at least immediately see a really good way to get up there like there's that but I didn't I couldn't really see a, a good way to grab it so then I just started running around like a chicken with my head cut off
And there are dudes everywhere. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now it's like, what in the heck is going on? Yeah, I, th I just, yeah. And that was kind of stupid because I actually had ghost stance enabled, or um, not enabled, uh, ready. So I could have actually killed those three guys uh, without any issue at all. And I didn't even notice that until just now. That's where you get to see the the downside of how, how or it, it costing twice as much to heal. Yeah, screw those guys. Okay. And that, that just didn't even work. So at this point I was getting all flustered and frustrated. If you can't already tell that. These guys are so tough. And yeah, I mean, it's oh. And then this part is ridiculous. I'm on fire, swimming in the water. And that was that was the end of that. But um, fortunately, I guess fortunately for me, even though that was completely incompetent, guys, I didn't even I didn't even know what to say about that. That it didn't it didn't say um, that sent the Mongols against Yamaniko's crew. it didn't say in that, but it, it it basically saved the progress of having lit all those fires or having, you know, thrown the thrown the flower into all those fires. So I didn't have to do it again, which is nice. Uh, but anyway, now you just have to go and slaughter everyone. Um, but <laughs> I don't think that the... Not all of the AI really realized what was going on here. So I think the fact that I died kind of slightly messed it up. But... It, it it was fine. It was fine with me at that point. Because honestly, guys, at that point, after after that last scene, I mean, I'm I'm actually glad the mic wasn't on because I was I was I was super frustrated. I was I was uh, uh, it would not have been something that I would have been proud to uh, to have have uh, committed to um, <laughs> committed to a recording. I was probably saying some some fairly uh, unpleasant things. Oh my goodness! Now another thing to note, just uh, I don't know if it if uh, it came up in the last one in the last I think it, I think in the last episode it might have showed up, but um, the uh, the automatic parry when you're using the uh, the wind stance I think it's the wind stance. Uh, for the uh, for the spearman, the automatic parry does not work when you're using this armor. So that's another downside of it. Because I, I mean, like I, I rely on that automatic parry. Like that is my bread and butter. Oh, yeah. 
yeah. See, he got all three. It took all three pair, uh, all three of the uh, uh, special attacks from the automatic parry. I mean, from the from the with the Mongols. From the perfect parry. The coast to the north. Because those guys are so powerful, but still, we killed him with just one perfect parry, which is just—it's really cool. Like when you when you get the timing right, it's a really satisfying armor to use. Um, I feel like I'm more effective when I'm using the Sakai no armor. Sign of Suki's bolt. Hope Sugi wasn't on board. Yeah. But, um, I don't know. I want to use this a little bit more and see if I can get used to the difference. And then we'll see. We'll see. A red Kasa hat. Farewell, Sugi. I wish you better fortune in the afterlife. So... I found this to be a little bit interesting because when when we grab the hat, it says uh, perhaps all that remains of Sh Suki. I should bring this to her husband in the village near the lighthouse. So I go here, uh, and then I see this situation here, and what happened here? I mean, you know, you can kind of behold this, but that old from Sugi. I don't think that's her husband. It's safer for everyone if I just disappear. I suspect no one understands that more than you. May we both live lives free from being hunted. <laughs> she survived. Good luck, Sugi. To both of us. Yeah, I mean, I guess... Whoops, I nailed the microphone there. Um, I guess just since um, she's alive, we don't have to talk to her husband. I, I guess that that's what that's all about. But, uh, but all right, guys, that pretty much does it. That really sums up our experience uh, or my experience that I just had um, finishing up Iki Island. And man, you know, I am really, really glad that I did it. I, I'm very happy with the DLC and honestly um you know I didn't really read a whole bunch of reviews or anything of it but I I'm was really happy for uh, or with it uh one I think it it added just if you're looking at a gameplay perspective I think it added like new unique challenges like I think that the the enemies uh were were different enough and varied enough that it added something new there so if that was all you were looking for, I think that that it it was was good in that sense. But just in terms of kind of deepening and broadening uh, the character of Jin, I really really liked it. You get to know a little bit more about his father and his mother and kind of where these elements of Jin come from, like the the I guess you'd say the warrior uh, within. <laughs> really comes from his dad and this uh, deep and contemplative philosophical side really comes from his mother and and then of course we get to see the the influence um the, the influence that shimura had on him and that was really more um you know because shimura really became his father basically um you know once he was uh you know once again i'm guessing he was maybe like 14 15 something like that that's just a guess maybe a little bit younger than that um and and then shimura had his own um influence uh, on him and you know i i would say that shimura was in many ways a blend of uh, of that, uh, I think I think that he was uh, he very much had the the warrior spirit, uh, but I think that he also has uh, has a very uh, deep uh, I don't know contemplative and philosophical um, nature to him. Now he's certainly a very uh, a very a stubborn uh, a stubborn 
individual and is not really open to new ideas. And we see Jin kind of develop very early on to kind of open himself and say, well, hey, you know, I need to adapt in order to get the job done. And that's something that Shimura is never willing to do. So, you know, I do think that that is, is something that we really do see that probably is something that comes from his mother, really. Um, which, which I do think is, is, is really, is really quite interesting. And, um, yeah, I mean, you know, I don't know what else to, to really say about that, you know, um, apart from, I, I also, I also think it's interesting that, you know, if you, if you, if you think about it from, I don't know, I guess you'd say more of the, uh, traditional gender roles you, you have the, you have like the kind of the, the warrior figure, um, as his father, and then you have the, the caring, nurturing um, uh, mother figure. Uh, and, and, it, and it really, I don't know, it really works. And it makes his character so, so uh, well-rounded. And, and, and that's one of the, that's, that's what I think just is, is brilliantly done here uh, with, uh, with the Iki Island content. But anyway, guys, that is it for Iki Island and I know I said this at the end of the last episode but this time we actually we actually are going to do it this is the end uh, of our time with Iki Island now this I believe once again I believe is episode 29 and that would mean that the next one is um, supposed to be a Kurosawa episode and I haven't 100% decided whether or not it's actually going to be a Kurosawa episode the last time I did that I was having a little bit of trouble, like telling whether or not um, someone was using like one of those unblockable attacks, like a you know with uh, the red when it glows red, you can't tell the difference between the red and the blue when it's uh, black and white. And with especially with this particular play style that we're using right now, um, it's extremely important that we we know everything that the enemy is doing. So I don't know if that's going to be good or bad, but uh, we will see whether or not uh, the next episode it keeps it keeps with uh, with the way that we've been doing this series. But anyway, guys, this is it. Uh, drink it in, and it is uh, it's kind of uh, tragically beautiful. This this kind of I think captures a lot. Um, of of uh, Iki Island here, and I just I, I absolutely love it. This is this is really this is really great. But anyway, guys, we bid uh, Iki Island uh, adieu, and I thank you for joining me on this journey. So as always, thanks so much for watching, guys, and we're going to be picking up right here next time.